Normal, normal, rare. Okay. A Wrath Guard! Have you wanted a succubus with a different effect? Here it is. It's a 4 3 for 2. It doesn't discard one of your cards, but whenever it takes damage, you also take damage. So if this thing gets frostbolted, it dies and you lose 3 health. You don't get frozen though. There's a card that deals 8 damage to minions in the mage's side. Imagine if you will getting hit by that. It's a tremendous waste, but it's a 5 mana deal 8 damage effectively to your face and kill this minion. It could certainly see some play, you coin that out on turn 1 and you force the hand, but if it gets killed, that's 3 damage to your face. Bolster! Give your taunt minions plus 2 plus 2 for the warrior. If you have a lot of taunts, this is not a bad card. If you have one taunt, it's like a power of the wild. If it is it power of the wild? I think it is. The word druid card that gives plus two plus two and taunt. But if you have two taunts, suddenly it's much more valuable. And three taunts, yeah. You have a lot of taunts, that thing is gonna get you a lot of value. Clockwork knight! Uh, five 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 is okay. Give a friendly mech plus one plus one is okay. It's okay, in my opinion. It's not the worst card in the world. It's got a good stat body. It only affects mechs with its battle cry. You could see it be used. You could see it playing a, a Noyotron and then this. It's alright. You're alright, Clockwork Knight. You might get play in some mech decks. Probably not mage ones. Not fast enough, though. Spell Slinger! Now... <laughs> Remember the variants of uh, getting random cards? Here's another one for the mage. Give both you and your enemy a random spell from any class. It could be Totemic Might. It could be Assassinate. It could be Fireball or Pyroblast or Totemic Might. Or it could be some of the new spells or Totemic Might. Do you, do you see where I'm getting here? It could be anything. It's going to help your opponent more, however, if or you more, if you don't have as many cards. The less cards you have, the more this helps you. And it's a 3-4 for 3. Not a bad stat line. Hello, Fist of Jaraxxus. When you play or discard this, you deal 4 damage to a random enemy. Here's that discard synergy. You, dis you play uh, a succubus after you play the Tiny Knight of Evil. It discards Fist of Jaraxxus. Now it's not so bad that this card has been discarded, because it's played to be discarded. You discard it, you get 4 damage. Interestingly, this synergizes with Deathwing as well. Discard your hand, deal 4 damage to a random enemy, including potentially the opponent's face. Interesting card. Interesting card. What have we got? Rare. Normal, normal, normal. Another Bash. Another Kraken. A Honey Champion. It's a Senjin that gains attack every time you heal. Ache any character. Not necessarily you. If you're playing against a Priest, it stops them healing because it keeps buffing the Holy Champion. It's like a bigger version of the Light Warden. It's going to be nasty. Another Silent Knight. And another Savage Combatant. We're starting to go through these a little faster now, because we're seeing some of the cards already. Let's have a look. A Wormrest Agent. If you're holding a dragon, this becomes a 2-4 with Taunt for 2. That's pretty good. That's a pretty beefy taunt if you're holding a dragon. Dragon Priest may become a thing at some point. Here's an epic! Another Stable Master. Well, I have two of them now. Another Holy Champion. A Golden Bear Trap. This is an interesting uh, secret in that it plays after your hero has been attacked. It summons a 3-3 bear with taunt. That's a cheap way to summon a bear. They're like, haha! I shall use my bloodlust and gain loads of attack. I hit you once and then the bear trap appears. And now they have to waste some of that attack they would have been using to kill the bear. Nice card. 
And here is the Tuskar Jouster. The one that lots of people like. It's a 5-5 five, five for 5. It's nice. If you win a Joust, it heals 7 man, seven health. Not mana. That would be amazing. You win a Joust, get 7 mana crystals filled. Ouch. No. Compare it to the Antique Heal Bot. A 3-3 three, three for 5 that restores 8 guaranteed. This has the chance of not restoring that. But there you go. Even if it doesn't, it's still a 5-5 five, five for 5. If it does, it heals 7. Really good for slowing down your opponent's killing of you. And... We are waiting for these ones to open, apparently. Ah, there you go. Little bit of latency. Here is that gold shaft foot member with the stats swapped. Good at dealing with minions with 2 attack... Uh, 2 health, rather than... Uh, <laughs> Ones with one. If you're not playing against a mage or a druid, this isn't a bad card. There's another ancestral knowledge. There's a Drenai Totem Carver. If you have lots of totems on the board, this buffs them for plus one. All of them. So basically, if you have one totem on the board, you're getting value. Because plus one, plus one on a 4 4 body, not bad. If you have three totems on the board, that's a lot of value. Here is the miniature version of the Argent Commander. That had 4-2 with Divine Shield and Charge for, th for 6. This has 2-1 Divine Shield Charge for 3. It's sticky, which means it won't get won't be taken off the board easily. Unless you uh, Earth Shock it. But you can trade with a minion with 2 health, and it will still be here. That's nice. Admittedly, you could also just trade in the Arcane Shot for one, but this also leaves a minion on the board. And there's that Mage card. Eight damage to a minion. It's like a worse version of Assassinate. It's definitely a worse version of Assassinate in a way, but it's the Mage version of Assassinate. That will kill Ragnaros just as handily as Assassinate will. And if you hit a Wrath Guard with it, that's eight damage to the opponent's face. Also, now that that card exists, you're less likely to see Fireball in Arena. You can get that instead. Another Bolster. Another Bear Trap. That's good. Another Totem Golem. That's good. Another Rathguard. That's okay. And another Thunder Bluff. That's not bad. Let's have a look. What have I got? Normal. Rare. Another Bolster. Another Raider. Another Totemic. Another Dragonhawk Rider. And a Mogor's Champion. It's an 8-5 for 6. That's awesome. However, it has a 50% chance to attack the wrong enemy. Imagine if you will, a 50% chance to bypass your taunt and Ragnaros your face. Maybe if you swap those stats around, you could get a 6-7. Uh, Boulder Fistoga, but this has its damage firmly planted in the upper spectrum. So you put that on turn 6 and you can trade with some nasty things. Potentially. 50% chance you'll totally fail, though. Here's another Ogremar Aspirant. Here's the Silverhand region that I've been looking forward to seeing. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3 that summons a Paladin Hero Power minion whenever you Hero Power. Put that down, and now you're summoning two of them every time you hero power. Or if you're the mage and you're put, you're dealing one damage with your hero power, you're also summoning a one-one. Nice. I like this card. I like this card a lot. I might have it in my uh, paladin deck. Another snowbolt. Another bear trap. And a lock and load. Hunters now have a reason to play lots of really low-cost spells like Arcane Shot, because each time you cast one when this has been cast, you get a random Hunter card. It's a good way of filling up your hand if you're just throwing it away. And there's also a reason to use Hunter's Marks and Arcane Shots and loads of secrets and tracking. Tracking will give you a Hunter card and draw you a card from your deck. Could see this getting some use. But it's not really going to fit into a deck that just goes face. Okay. Another Warhorse Trainer. 
a fencing coach. The next time you use your hero power, it's effectively free. 2-2 two, two for 3, though, is not a strong body, so that hero power had better do something awesome. It better do something awesome. Flash heal. Power word glory. And a flame lance. Starting to go through these a bit faster now. A golden Tuskar Jouster. Ooh, that looks shiny and nice. Look at that. <laughs> Another uh, Thunder Bluff Valiant? Would you like a slightly cheaper Boulder Fist Ogre as a rogue? As long as you combo this card out, that's what it becomes. If you don't combo this out, it's... It's not terrible, it's got a 5-5 five, five effective stat line, but you'd prefer it to be a 6-7. Another reason to combo. Another tournament attendee, another bolster. Okay, next one. Another Pit Fighter. Another Bash. A Tournament Medic. Every time you use your Hero Power, you get the equivalent of the Priest's Hero Power. Use the Priest's Hero Power to heal your minions, and this heals you. This can also be Hobgoblined into a 310 for 4 that does the same effect. A good way to subtly attempt to stave off death. Also, it's got a 1-8 body. That's a nice, big body. That's not going to be killed very much. That's not going to be killed very much at all. Could be stolen, though. Another fencing coach. Okay. Next pack. Another epic. Another Magnetar Alpha. Not bad. A Buccaneer. Whenever you equip a weapon, give it plus one attack. It's a one mana 2-1 that if you hero power next turn, as a rogue, you get a 2-2 two, two knives. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Every weapon gets plus one attack. You play this before you play an Assassin's Blade, and it's a 4-4. Four, four. It's like it's like a 2-1 that has a lesser version of Deadly Poison equipped. And it's a pirate! Yar! Hello, Tuscar. Hello, Clockwork Knight. Hello, Totemic. No legendaries yet. Wasn't expecting one at this point. Another King Zelic. Another Ice Rager. It's better than the Magma Rager. It's just better. Much like the Evil Heckler, it's a common version of a basic card that's better. Another Snowbold. Another Orgrimmar. And an... Another Argent Lance. Here we go. Next pack. Another Aspirant. Another Jouster. Another Glory. Another Elec. Woohoo! Here we go! Ice Howl. It's a 10 10 with charge for 9, which is amazing! But it can't attack heroes. But it can attack minions! But it can't attack heroes. It's a 9 mana Pyroblast that you're gonna throw as an enemy, and then there's a minion left on the board, hopefully. Bearing in mind you can't put this down and then silence it, and then ch hit the face on the turn it's played, because it's. will lose the charge ability. But you could hit a minion with this, and then you could silence it and hit the face. It's a nasty card for 9 mana that you get to use immediately to trade in on something. And if you've got something left that does something later, that's even better. First Legendary. Hopefully not the last. Not the one I was expecting to see first. At least it's not Hemet Nesting Wary. I was sort of worried they'd still sneak that in, even though it's not in this expansion. Oh, it's the Murloc Knight! Ah, <laughs> It's... Like the version of the Silver Hand Regent, except it makes Murlocs! A random Murloc every time. The dream is that you'd spawn something like. Well, you could spawn a Murloc War Leader, which will then make this a 5 5. Or Old Murkai, which will basically be pay 2 mana, get a 1 1, and a 3 4 with charge. Nice card. I can see that being used even in non Murloc decks. 
another spell slinger, another ancestral knowledge, another bone guard lieutenant, and another fist of Jaraxxus. Excellent. What's next? Another gadget Zan. Another Tuscar. I'm getting a lot of those. A wild Walker. Another Fist of Jaraxxus. And another Flame Lance. Okay. What next? They're going quite fast now. Lock and load number two. Flame Lance number a couple. Evil Heckler. Bone Guard Lieutenant. And here is your demon for your warlocks that doesn't have a negative to it. It can't be big game hunted. And it's a demon. It's got a nice stat line. And it's a demon that isn't going to discard your cards or destroy your mana crystals or hit you in the face or it's a nice sturdy minion. Nice minion to play on turn seven. If you don't have Dr. Boom, or if you're not going to play something like a... You're going to play... Basically, if you want to play a nice minion, then they go, Ooh, this is actually a little difficult to deal with. Because it can't be big game hunted. Another Dragonhawk Rider. Another Heckler. Another Doom Guard. Another Silent Knight. And another Savage Combatant. Not bad. There's going to be a lot of dust at the end of this, I get the feeling. Another Aspirant, another Flame Lance, another Fencing Coach. I'm getting a lot of Fencing Coaches. Maybe the game's telling me I need to practice my swordsmanship. Snowbold, a Bolster, a Bash, an Ancestral Knowledge, and another, an Argent Watchman. Ah, this is the Ancient Watcher that has worse stats but can attack when you use your hero power. It's not that great. I think it could have done with have being a 3-4. That would have been better. A 2-4 is one more attack, one more health for not being able to attack. It's... Ugh. I don't see many people using it at all. Demon Fuse. Mulch! Destroy a minion like Assassinate. Give a random minion to your opponent. Yes, it may be a better minion, but it's more likely if it's a really expensive one you save this for, it's worse. Or at least it's different. Sure, you may have switched out Ragnaros for a Boulder Fist Ogre, but it's still not Ragnaros. And that's the important thing. Just don't use this on, say, a Wisp, and then watch them get Ragnaros. That would be a little sad. Just open these quickly, because I, I thought maybe they'll all be cards I've already seen. And they're all cards I've already seen. But I have two Murloc Knights now. That's a plus. And a little bit of waiting there. Another Ice Rager. Another Lance Carrier. Another Brave Archer. Another Bear Trap. And another... another I have loads of Savage Combatants. <laughs> Absolutely loads of them. <laughs> And another Spawn of Shadows. Another Dragonhawk Rider. An Ooh, Refreshment Vendor. Are you being rushed down too hard? This card is for you. Because if you're being rushed down, and you've barely hit them, they're not really going to feel the healing effect. You are. And you're going to get a 3-5 on the board. That's a nice minion if you're being rushed down. Another Wild Walker. Another Brave Archer. We're not even halfway through. Actually, we are now halfway through. No, we are nearly halfway through. Hello, sparring partner! A 3-2 taunt that gives another minion taunt. And then you use bolster and they all become super powerful. Yeah, this is a good way to build a taunt wall. This is a really good way to build a taunt wall. And it's a 3-2. Not bad. <laughs> Yeah, it's not. Some might say it's not as good as a, uh, not as good as a uh, Sun Fury Protector. But it only makes one minion have taunt, which means that you don't have issues with placement. Like you're not going to be like, I can't put it here because it will make this minion have taunt as well. Another ancestral knowledge, another warhorse trainer, another Void Crusher. These are going faster now. 
Seal of Champions. Give a minion three attack and divine shield. It combines two one cost cards into a three cost card. May see some play. I don't see it personally. People tend to run either one or the other. They don't tend to run both. Silent Knight. Wrathguard. Another armored warhorse. A ball of spiders! Would you like three web spinners on the board at once? Not many people would, apparently. This card is interesting, but I don't see it being played by me. At six mana, you want to be making more than three web spinners. Unless you're really desperate to kill something with a knife juggler. Maybe you'll get King Crush three times. Or maybe you won't. Maybe you won't. Who knows? Flame Lance, Bolster, Totem Golem, Pit Fighter, and another ball of spiders. I needed two, apparently. I needed two. Bolster. Another fencing coach. A golden tournament attendee! Hurrah! He's so happy to be there. He's gonna die so horribly. Holy Champion! Ice Rager. Let's get some more interesting stuff I haven't seen yet. Not like that. Or that. Or that, actually, because I've seen that before. Hmm. Got an epic? I already have two of it. <laughs> Technically, I think one of them's golden, though. Go. Rolty Kraken. Bolster. Power shot! Here we go. You're a hunter. You need to deal you need to deal with somebody who's trying to rush you down. Two man two damage to a minion and the minions next to it. It's like a better version of Cone of Cold, but it doesn't freeze your opponents. Minions. And it costs one less. It's like a lesser version of the um exploding shot. Not bad. Not bad. It won't do much against minions with high health, but it's designed to deal with people rushing you down. And a Cut Purse. It's a rogue card that you can coin out on turn one, and if you get to hit the face, you get the coin back. And then you hit the face again, and you get to coin the coin again. And again. And again. I think the pricing for this is fair. If this was a 3-2 two for 2, everyone would play it. If it's a 2-2 two two for 2, people sort of go... This isn't a shielded mini bot, so maybe not. It's a risk. You coin this out on turn one, it dies, you've lost the coin, and you've put out a 2 2 minion that's died. But if you get it back, that's pretty good. Kraken? A Twilight Guardian. Ooh, another epic, too. If you're holding a dragon, this 4 mana 2 6 becomes a 3. Six with taunt. That's pretty good for four mana. And if you have a dragon, you're gonna play this. It's an it's a better Senjin. <laughs> if you have a dragon, it's a better Senjin by one health. That one health can make a difference, but it will get fireballed just as nastily as any other. And there's the Grand Crusader, a five five for six that gives you a paladin card, a random paladin card. Good card. Gonna see people playing this, because most of the Paladin cards are pretty good. Except maybe Eye for an Eye. But, imagine if you got Tyrion out of it. Or the new Legendary here. Or if you got Bolvar. Okay, if you got Bolvar, that might not be the best thing. Quick, I'm top decking! Give me a minion! Oh, it's Bolvar! Oh. Oh. Yeah. You might not want Bolvar. But hey, you'd want to Consecrate, you'd want an Equality, you'd want uh, Blessing of Kings, you'd want um, Lay on Hands, all good cards. Lowly Squire, the one drop that has Inspire, that gains plus one attack. You play it on turn one, you Hero Power, it becomes a 2-2. Two -two. If it manages to survive, you Hero Power again, it becomes a 3-2. Two. In two turns, after you've played it, it becomes a two drop. And hey, if you manage to survive another few turns, it becomes an Ice Rager. 
a three drop. If you let these get out of control, they really get out of control. And another snow world. It's been going on for a lot longer than I thought it would. What have we got? Another Watchman. A Wrath Guard. Another Fist of Duraxis. Another Clockwork Knight. And another Snowbolt. Let's have a look at the next one. One of those. Another Silent Knight. A Colosseum Manager. In theory, you could play this minion when it's been um, on the board with a Warsong Commander. And you could trade with it. And then you can hero power and bring it back into your hand and get the um, get it fully healed again for three mana. It's an odd card. There's going to be some interesting synergy with this. You could hero power it back into your hand and then play it again for a knife juggler. But ultimately, it's... It's interesting. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say bad because it's a two five for three, which is not a terrible stat line. But its hero power is odd. Its inspirability is unusual. Another Twilight Guardian. I might be building a dragon deck, except I'm missing all the really good dragons. Freshman vendor. Flame Juggler! It's an alternative to Knife Juggler. Do you want something that will survive being hit by a two attack minion? And will deal one damage to a random enemy? This is your card. He plays a Lepinome. You play a Flame Juggler. You kill it! You have a 2-3 on the board. Alternatively, he plays a Lepinome. You miss and hit his face and he can't trade in. Not without doing something extra. Because it's a 2-3. I don't see this dethroning the Knife Juggler, but it's still a pretty nice card. Captured uh, Jormungar. Power Glory. And an Alex Jarza's Champion. It's a Warrior card with Battle Cry that if you're holding a Dragon, for Dragon Warrior, it gets plus one attack and charge. You may think that's just like a Fiery War Axe, but it's a minion. And you're not, you're not hitting your face with this. And if it survives being a, a trading into something, you've still got a minion on the board. You're not using your health to kill things. Plus, if you have a dragon, sometimes three attack is all you need to kill off an opponent. And if you don't have a weapon, there it is. Not a bad card. Another Watchman. Another Void Crusher, a Flame Lance, another Living Roots. I think that might be my second Living Roots now. And another Holy Champion. There will be a lot of dust. Another Silver Hand Regent. I now have two of them. My second Lowly Squire, another Power Glory, another Tournament Attendee, and another Knight of the Wild. We are definitely past the halfway mark now. Another Totemic. Another Fist of Jaraxxus. Another Flame Lance. A Ram Wrangler! If you have a beast on the board and you play this, chances are you're going to get value. Because I think on average you're going to get a pretty nice beast. Of course, you might get King Crush. You might also get an Angry Chicken. Or worse, a Captain's Parrot. At least you can actually buff an Angry Chicken and get some nice enrage effects. But on average, you're pretty good with this. On average. There's the variance in there again. Also, it uses the um, picture for one of the tutorial minions when you're fighting Hemet. And an Ancestral Knowledge. Oh, absolutely missed putting that pack down. Okay. A Golden Mogor's Champion! It looks pretty cool. He doesn't seem to be having much fun on that, uh, trying to be a knight, but there you go. And... We've seen all these before. Even the Argent Lance. Let's see if we've seen any of these before. Yep. Yep. And another yes. And another yes. And a no! 
This is a game changer for Shaman. It restores 7 health for 3. Not bad. Not as good as some of the other heals. But if you win a joust, it heals you for nearly half your health. 14 points of healing. That's a lot. That is a lot of healing. That is a game changer. For 3 mana, you can really slow down your opponent's attack with that. Oh, I'm nearly dead. I'm now halfway back to being healthy for 3 mana. And there is no overload on that. If you lose the Joust, you still get healed. If you win, you get healed a lot. That's a good card, I think. That's a really good card. Another Rider? A Golden Lance Carrier! Oh, the butterfly flaps. That's quite cool. A rare. Another Armored Warhorse. A Dark Bargain! Would you like to discard two cards to assassinate two random minions? How many times have you been a hunter and gone, I have deadly shot, but I might hit the wrong one? Not with Dark Bargain, you won't. You will kill both of them. And discard two cards. Good card, I think. I think people are going to use it. I think it's a really good removal card. You can get rid of two really nasty minions with it. He's played Ysera and Alexstrasza. They're both dead now. And you could just kill them, and then you could draw another card. <laughs> and if they're Fist of Draxus cards, the Dream, you've now dealt eight, eight damage to your opponent's face. <laughs> Good card, I think. That's going to get some play. Maybe not by me, but by someone. Another Fist of Draxus. Another Shadow Pan Rider. Now I have two of those. I have a lot of Dalaran Aspirants, though. A lot of them. No Sky Captain Crag yet, though. I have two of those now. And an Injured Kvaldir. Think a miniature Injured Blade Master. It deals three damage to itself, so it's a 2-1 for one. But if you heal it, it becomes a 2-3 for one. Or if you use a Circle of Healing, it becomes a 2-4 for 1. That's really good. But it comes injured, which means it can just die to hero powers. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't, it's not bad. There are a lot of rares in this one. Well, I've seen those before. A Golden Ball of Spiders! Yay! It is golden. It does look very nice, but it's Ball of Spiders. I'm sure I may use it. Ah, King's Defender! Do you want a Fiery War Axe with one more attack? If you have a Taunt Minion. I don't see this getting much play. I really don't. It is a 3-3 three, three for 3. That's not terrible. But you need a Taunt Minion now. On turn 3. So... Do you have a Neutron out? Or a Frostwolf Grunt? Or a Goldshire Footman? If not... This isn't the best weapon. And this is something I've been wanting. The Effigy Secret for the Mage. Almost better in some ways than Mirror Entity, because you kill a minion and you get a replacement of the same cost. If that's a really expensive minion, then it gets replaced to a, for another really expensive minion. Not as good as you'd think in some regards, because a lot of minions have battle cries that aren't that useful. This is why people have sort of gone off Sneed's old Shredder, because a lot of the really decent legendaries have battle cries that you won't get. You won't get the battle cry on these either. But hey, if you pull out Deathwing and Effigies out on the board, you might just get another one. I'm looking forward to seeing if I can slot that into my mage deck. <laughs> Okay, next deck. And by deck, I mean pack. And by pack, I mean these cards. Hey, it's another Argent Watchman. We've got a lot of you. Let's have a look. Another Warhorse. Another Ice Ranger. A Golden Buccaneer! Look at him! He is so very happy to be in the tournament. I like that. He moves his sword. Para doesn't move, though. That's really cool. 
definitely think I'm going to have to build a rogue pirate deck now. Definitely. Okay, bear trap. Flame lance, flame juggler. I've got a second one of those. Another armored war horse. I have a lot of armored war horses. And a little bit of latency there. Lane of the lake. Demon fuse. Totemic. A tournament medic, not totemic medic. Another Murloc Knight and a King's Defender. I notice when it lags a little, some of the animations disappear. Interesting. <gasps> Legendary number two. We'll save that. Ooh! Ooh -hoo 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 -hoo! This is a pack! As opposed to all the other ones. That's a Wormrest Agent. That is a Poisoned Blade. Um... Yeah, not many people are excited about this one. It's a 1-3 rogue weapon that if you hero power, this gets a little tougher. Uh, I suppose you play it really early and then save it up? You could just wait one mana and get a 3-4 weapon, I suppose. If you're really not using your hero power to trade, this is a not bad card. But if you're not using your hero power to trade, why are you playing rogue? You may be playing a weird sort of gadgets and auctioneer rogue, but even they have poison blades. A sea reaver! It's like a boulder fist ogre that hurts all of your minions. You could see it used in Patron Warrior, but it's six mana. That's expensive. You could see it used in an Enraged Warrior, but if you're turn six and you haven't been enraging your minions, you're in trouble. <laughs> Uh, you could use it to draw cards with an Acolyte of Pain. You could use it to draw armor with your armor smith. You could also just play it as a 6-7 on an empty board, and it's a Boulder Fist Ogre. Don't see many people using it. But they might. The Mistcaller. A Shaman Legendary. It gives all of your minions on in your hand and your deck plus one plus one. It's a buff that persists for the rest of the match, whether your opponent likes it or not. And that's why it's a 4-4 for 6. The stat line isn't great for the cost, but you're buffing every single minion that you have. And barring him having lots of um, mass dispels, that's going to be annoying. Your minions suddenly become extremely valuable and valueful as well. Suddenly minions that may not seem that good, because they have weird abilities, are better, because they have plus one, plus one. They have plus one, plus one. That one mana tournament attendee is now a 3-2. Alakir is now a 4-6. That is a really good thing. I'm not sure if it works with Neptulon cards that are drawn out when Neptulon is played, though. Not a bad card. I could see myself making some sort of Bloodlust-esque Shaman deck with the Mistcaller? Not bad. Second Legendary. At least it's not Hemet. Two rares. I have not seen the Shady Dealer yet in this. Shady Dealer also synergizes with Pirates. If you have a Pirate, this gets plus one plus one. If you have a Pirate, this is a three mana five four. And it's not a pirate itself. So killing other pirates isn't going to make a difference. A 3 mana 5 4? That's really good. And even if you don't have a pirate, it's a 3 mana 4 3. Which also isn't that bad. I can see this getting some use. I can see myself using that definitely. Nice card. Nice card. Okay, what have we got? Living Roots. Warhorse. Demon views the Silent Knight, and another Alex Draws a champion. Not bad. Will this one have legendary number three? No. Will it have any cards? I have another Golden Mogors champion. It's like the Golden uh, Shield Maidens in the Goblin vs. Gnomes one. And another Argent Lance. A lot of Golden Mogul's Champions. Here comes Golden Mogul's Champion number three! Wrathguard, Ukla, Elec, Flamelance, and a Sparring Partner. 
He is ready to spar with you. So is the lag. Oh, that's an epic. That's not bad. Flame Lance. Ordnance Dandy. It's another Sea Reaver. And a Burgle! Would you like a Thought Steal for the rogue that only steals class cards from your opponent? This is it. In a way, it's more specialized, which is good. You're more likely to know what you're going to get. In a way, it's bad because you're not going to be stealing minions that are neutral. So you're not going to be stealing Ragnaros with this. On the other hand, you may steal Gromash. Or you may steal Totemic Might. Twice. I want the joking bit Totemic Might. Now there are loads of Totem Synergy cards. Totemic Might actually might become a thing. I doubt it, but it might. There's another ball of spiders, because I needed another one. Maybe I did. And there are two silent knights. They're guarding over the ball of spiders. It is their sworn duty. And there's another tiny knight of evil. And a holy champion. Living roots. Into the lake, and another evil heckler. Twelve packs left. Will we get legendary number three, or will we just have two? Who knows? Well, there isn't one in here. In fact, there isn't a single card we haven't seen before. I wonder if there are any common cards I haven't seen yet. Ooh. Ooh, legendary number three! Hey! Please be Sky Captain Crag! Ice Howl number two. Well, it's 400 dust, but I wished it had been Sky Captain Crag. Oh well, 400 dust. That'll make an epic of my choice. Now I need a fourth legendary. Because I got two duplicate legendaries. Or, well, one duplicate legendary twice. But hey, two legendaries. I may end up using Ice Howl. I don't know what in yet. What have we got? Another Spawn of Shadows. Hmm. <laughs> Not bad. And... Oh, 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 two rares. Oh, Power Shot again. Power Shot number two. We're on the last seven packs. Nearly there. Another Effigy. I don't need to craft any of those now. And after this pack, we're on the same amount of packs I'd normally buy with gold. In uh, five pack little um, chunks. This is not a bad pack. A lot of rares. <gasps> Darnassus Aspirant. I've been waiting for this one. It's like a wild growth packaged into a 2-3. You lose the wild growth when it dies, but if you manage to put that down and then pay like a piloted shredder, you've gained. <laughs> also, it's a minor nerf to mirror to Mirror Entity and to a Powered Shredder. You don't get the Battle Cry when the Powered Shredder minion comes out, but you do get the Death Rattle. And you really don't want to play this with Baron Rivendare unless you want to lose two Mana Crystals. Nice card. Here is a second Mulch. Ooh. So we're down to the last five. The chances of there being a Legendary in these last five are pretty slim. Pretty slim. In fact, I may not even see any new cards. I don't think I'm going to. As you never know, they might surprise me. They might surprise me. Let's have a look. A golden, a golden spell slinger. Ooh, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. A light champion. Would you like a spell breaker that only hits demons? Here it is. It silences a demon. I think specifically, it silences a Void Caller. Let's not joke around here. That's what it's there for. It silences a Void Caller. It silences Malganis. If you want to just hit his face and win, it's basically there to silence Void Callers and then be able to trade into them because it's the exact same stat line. It's also cheaper than a Void Caller so that you could play this and then something else. I think that's basically what this is here for, to silence Void Callers. It's not a bad stat line, even if you decide not to play it to silence something. 
Four three for three, not terrible. Four horse trainer. And a third effigy card. Well, I definitely don't need to do anything with those now. Definitely not. And the last few packs. Let's have a look. Oh, another cut purse. Now I have two. The last pack. Full of legendaries, or none. Yep, none, as I thought. And we end with a Tuscar, which we seem to have had absolutely loads of. And that was the pack opening of 73 card packs. Or 78. I got the number wrong. 78 card packs. We got two unique legendaries and a duplicate legendary, and probably a lot of uh, arcane dust. I don't know what I'm going to be using that for. I might need to craft a legendary or two myself. Or maybe one legendary in particular if I get enough arcane dust from this. The cards that are introduced in the Grand Tournament are very interesting. A lot of them aren't exactly upgrades. They change the way classes play. And they basically allow you to spice things up. You can start making 1-1s when you're using your hero power. You can make murlocs. You can buff your totems. Or your hero power can just be augmented. There is a Justicar Trueheart who will literally give you a better hero power. Your mage power deals two. Your paladin one summons two one ones. You get your choice of totem with shaman. Which is quite more useful than you think because people really want that spell totem more often than not. So! Let's see what I can do with all these cards, eh? For when we come back, folks, hopefully I'll have a entirely changed and different Millhouse Mana Fail deck, which then became Mech Fail. And now I need to think about what to name the next one. So, I'll catch you next time, and I'll see you then. And hopefully, I shall see you on the tournament grounds. And then you shall beat me and get one win closer to your daily, because I'll probably be playing Millhouse Mana Storm. Or a pirate rogue deck, or something really peculiar that doesn't really work. But does sometimes. So, I'll catch you next time, and I'll see you then. Later. Yeah! That was an odd white magic 4 reference. Later. <laughs>